Listen, I've never had any problem expressing my opinions, but what we're doing here is bigger than that. These are conversations that need to be had in an unfiltered way. Drag racing is all I've ever done. It's all I care to do. I respect the history, I appreciate how far we've come, but I want more for this sport, and I'll fight for it. It's uncut, it's unfiltered, this is the show of shows. The biggest names in drag racing. No holds barred. This is the great American motorsport, drag racing. Prove me wrong, I'll wait. Buck here, Drag Illustrated Magazine, checking in. It is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. Hope you're doing well, man. It's I was just listening to that intro, and I'm going, true, true. It's like, I do. There's nothing I love more than the sport of drag racing. I was just telling the guys in the green room before we started, like, it's literally my favorite pastime, talking about drag racing. I, I literally look forward to this every week, and I appreciate you we guys all never joining guessed. us. Really? Were you, no. are you surprised? I was thinking that's, about biggest names in drag racing. That's a big, true. That's a big unveil right there. It is a big unveil. What are you guys doing? JT, show me, everybody. Bring bring up my squad. <laughs> we got Tyler Crossno in the house. Hey. Um, look, TC, great to have you here in the heat of the day, which is kind of true. <laughs> it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Central Time, 3 o'clock out your way on the East Coast. You're uh, checking in from the luxurious Galat Motorsports Park. I want to talk about that. But uh, what I don't for those that don't know, and I maybe I'm about to get myself in some trouble here. I don't know how much of this is public knowledge, uh, Tyler, but um, y- your role has expanded and, and you've brought on some help at Virginia Motorsports Park. My boy Gavin Carter joining the fold there, uh, World Series of Pro Mod race director and all around great guy uh, allowed you to kind of be less uh spread less thin let's say yep. while you maintain your role at the helm of the pdra so what what is the lay of the land on all that stuff right now man i'll be honest it, it's kind of a deal where gavin and i've always said that you know for forever him and i've always been a team um since we were kids at memphis working together um and all the way through so it's cool to have him on board now um it's going to let me be able to be more creative uh put me back into some more of the promoter roles instead of having to be a race director and and having to stay completely glued to whatever's happening on the racetrack um we were planning to be testing right now so i was going to show that off but uh mother nature rained on our parade just a little bit for the second time no way testing. No i know way. everybody's surprised no oh don't talk God. about it tyler i was going to bring hey. this up don't talk about the shit don't <laughs> no, talk I, we're not going to talk, about, don't it. talk about it we, no, we're going to i'm going to train good. you we ain't talking about any more bad weather shit we, we got to shake that <laughs> hey you, we, you, well here's the that deal is too. a self-fulfilling prophecy my yeah. friend you'll you'll turn that in to a self foot so don't don't let's it's never there, it's about. also it's Wednesday. Wednesday. the rain does not file follow yeah. tyler or the pdra the Hold rain on. is significant it's but the it's, weather is dicey in the spring it's, in yeah, on the east Wednesday. coast get it out of the way morning. get it out of the way on wednesday exactly and, and look good. at the rest of the week and i mean Four we can dive right in talking about the weather and right behind this front that's coming Listen, through there right now, you've got some killer weather coming in this gorgeous. weekend. Screw, so screw we can your talk front. About screw your front. <laughs> screw <laughs> no, wait till you see, listen, listen, wait till you see the weather almanac. coming in for the I, weekend, I just, man. Listen to me. I'm telling you, I was having this conversation with Mick Snyder. Shout out to my buddy Mick Snyder over in uh, uh, beautiful Granbury, Texas. Went over to see him uh, for Easter. Him and his wife, Lindsay, his daughter, Maddie, selling some cookies. So we went over and bought a bunch of cookies, uh, which I did not need. Like I'm on the grind right now, hardcore working out six days a week. Um, but first time back in the gym since I tore my biceps. So I'm actually pretty stoked about it. But went over to see you. I'm so fired up today. Seven I was wondering. No, dude, I am fired up. I steady stay fired up. But uh, anyways, went over to see Mick and Lindsay buying some cookies, help uh, Maddie, their their senior in high school daughter, fix her car. Um, Anyways, we were talking about weather, Mick and I, and it was so funny. And I don't know if you're in the same category, Tyler, JT, Mike, but my dad, we I vividly remember pulling out of the driveway of my parents house, truck and trailer loaded up, ready to go racing in the pouring rain to drive 90 miles north to Eddyville, Iowa, somehow thinking that up there, just be beyond fine. the border, it's going to be beautiful. And it's, it's like, if I'm, going, if I'm going racing, if the schedule says we're going racing, 
We're going racing. That's I'm how you have checking, to operate. I'm not checking the weather. I mean, I mean I've never even thought about it. Literally, yeah. I haven't. Never thought about it. We're you going have to operate that way. We've learned that through the World Series of Pro Mod. Tyler, yes. you've got tons of experience with that. You almost have to just, until it literally starts raining, you operate you as if it's not going to. Yep. And and you have to kind of have that mindset because if you if you followed every weather forecast and they get better the weather, the technology and the forecasts are getting more accurate compared to like when your dad would roll out to, with that kind of mindset but you do you have to operate as if this is not going to happen and it, it does put you in a different mindset um, than you know the typical racer or someone else that doesn't have all the things on the line that a, that a race promoter or a, a sanctioning body or whatever has for that weekend. I, I think I was trying to come up with something like real poetic or smart from a book I'd read, but I was kind of drawn blank. So I, but I will say that it's, you just got to act as if like you got to act as if we got blue skies and sunshine and you, you have to prepare for those situations, but that whole like plan for the worst, expect, hope for the best. I don't know. I, I just think that you, Mike's right. You got to roll into the weekend I mean, going into World Series of Pro Mod and the Pro Superstar Shootout, I told Mike repeatedly, like, hey, you keep an eye on the weather, right? I'm the weather guy. So we I know that, Valen. You look like a meteorologist. I do. I need you to start getting that green hair. screen. Well, you, you could. You could do it. You're doing yeah. it now. Like, yeah. I mean, for those yeah, listening, you were you went right into it. Why was that so natural? I don't know, man. Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Let's I, need a, I need a green screen over here my chair that JT has never <laughs> seen before. Before oh, a couple weeks oh, ago, oh man, yeah, I need a guest over here. Did JT need to, go to your get house? Somebody. No, he never. He just, invited you guys had a party. Ever. We did, like, we did, we had a party. Yeah, I can't get never. enough of JT, so I invited him to the house. He's never invited me. Oh, what? Yeah. I, I got a chain out on. Accident. Hey, look, the greatest thing, and this is what I've said. Well, I, I stole this line from Tommy. He he gave it to me about two years ago, and he goes, "Look, you can look at those weather forecasts all you want." You can look, you can listen to the people talking about it. You can listen to Facebook. You can listen to all that. Or you can use these five words and you can make it work. I'm like, all right, what's five words? He goes, control what you can control. And at that point, game on. Doesn't matter if it rains. We're going to dry it off and go again. I mean, and I think you're just challenged in those moments to like make the best decision you can. I like go back to World Series of Pro Mod. You know, it was looking pretty sketchy and I hadn't even considered the weather. Like I'm thinking about all these other things, like how are walk up ticket sales going to do because we were just here three weeks ago. I'm like laboring all over that type of thing. Mike walks in the motorhome with Lonnie Graham and goes, hey, man, we need to talk about the weather. And I'm like, oh, OK, so we sit down well, and Lonnie they, comes up to me, Lonnie and Gavin, and they start talking about the weather. And I'm like, gosh, now I got to talk to Wes about the weather, <laughs> like which is the one thing I don't want to do. But I think it, it worked out. It did, but my point is that we you adapt as quickly to the situation as you can. Like our forecast was looking pretty sketch on Saturday, so it's like how do we make sure that we provide adequate value to our racers, provide adequate value to our fans? I think those are like above all check marks. Like those are the top priorities. Like how do we come as close to doing exactly what we said we were going to do or exceeding that? And it's we wanted to make sure these guys got three qualifying sessions on Friday. If it was looking like Saturday was going to be a rainout. Worst case scenario, they get four due to some sort of delay on Saturday. Best case yeah. scenario, they get it an additional qualifying session. And uh, I'm not a big qualifying guy. Like, I love the debate about, uh, like, God bless uh, the the Donald Long events. They're obviously the cornerstones of the drag racing world at this point in time. But some of those, I mean, I remember back in the day at the Sweet Marathons. 16, 10 rounds of qualifying or whatever. I'm not here to practice. Like, I'm here to, to drag race. So I, I, I was really hesitant on the four to five move. But I actually think it's become part of the program moving forward. I think Friday becomes an even better show. Uh, Saturday, uh, I mean, there's it just makes me. I think it's going to something that we'll adopt moving forward. I mean, granted, we're not we're not handling near the near as many hot rods as you are, Tyler. But for World Series, I think that three really shots, good. two shots thing. Or you guys whatever, did a really good work. job, and, and we said that you know being there as a racer, you know, I actually got to come this year and, and be with everybody down there, but the right move was made for the conditions that you had for everything that was going on. You know, it was, it was good to be proactive and get ahead of that and say, Hey, look, we're going to, we're going to put ourselves in a, in a spot to succeed. And you guys did that with the Friday move. And then Saturday played ball. And Hey, we, we had five really good sessions of qualifying and man, it was a hell of a race and we all enjoyed it. And it was really good to see our PDRA guys and girls down there. Um, it's funny. Like usually, you know, Wednesday testing, we come out here and everybody's like, Oh, stuff doesn't run and everything's junk and all this stuff. But like the first eight pro mods pull up to the racetrack and all of them blaze right down the racetrack. And that's just because of everybody got on their, got actually to a race this year. 
before that and, and came down to Bradenton with you guys and, and did the World Series. And, man, it's it's going to prove it all year long for a series um, like ours to come out and, and all our guys and girls go down there and race with you guys at the beginning of the season. They have their stuff together now, and it's, oh, boy, game on already. I think that – that thank you for that because – that's the goal. Like for us, we, we have so many conversations and we get a lot of questions about like, are you going to do more races or what's next and blah, 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 blah. But we always measure it against like, what is going to truly be good for the sport of drag racing? Like, would it be good for the sport of drag racing for us to roll out with a bunch more events? I, I don't think so. Like there's so many great options and great places to race right now and great independent events. The last thing I ever want to do is make a racer, make that tough decision, choose who they're going to support those type of things. I've been in that position before. I mean, growing up racing every weekend in my life, we were frequently met with the decision like, well, do we piss off, you know, whatever Gerald Kramer that owns Eddieville raceway park or, and go to that event or go to Cordova and make Scott Gardner yeah. happy. I mean, or vice versa. So I, I don't ever want to contribute to that because there's enough of it as it is with no, you know, I, I don't, I'm not calling anybody out. There's only so many weekends in the year, so what are you going to do? There's going to be overlap. Yeah. But I think that we measure this event, the World Series of Pro Mod, over in many ways. But uh, perhaps above all is how it contributes to the greater good of our sport. And I do think it creates a high, ride, or high tide moment to start the season. And like you're saying, everybody's sure. showing up at the PDRA season opener, the NMCA season opener, the Midwest season opener, the uh, uh, Northeast Outlaw Pro Mod season opener, big dog, and the list goes on ready to rock and roll because they've had yeah. their feet to the fire already early in the season. And I got to tell you, man, you guys did a fantastic job. Like I know you are proud and you should be because the PDRA uh, all but dominated uh, the world series of pro mod in 2024. Uh, I was impressed by it. I genuinely proud of y'all and what you guys have built in the level of racing that's going on within the confines of the PDRA. But Jeez Louise, like uh, the thing that I was really proud of was like you guys had the tent down there. You're having yep. luncheons for your racers and Tom and Tommy and Judy are down there hanging out. And you got Mark Beatty from Redline Oil, you know, hanging out with his wife. I mean, it's just a really cool thing you guys did. Then in the final with the flags, the flags. and the whole thing. Like, are awesome. And in the winner's circle, the, yes. some of the winner's yeah. circle shots had the whole PDRA squad with the flags. And I mean. Uh, it, it's hard to even think of any non PDRA winners off the top of my head. There were that... so the five classes um, that were contested. They were winner. We were able to win and runner up this season in all five. All and that's, I mean, it was crazy. Like I was sitting there watching the semis and I'm like, if this falls our way, this could happen pretty, like this could be pretty badass. And, and it was just like, Oh boy, this fell exactly the way it was supposed to. And man, it was, it was such a good deal. And, I'm going to go on on the roster here. I'm going to, like, step outside the box for a second. I want to put a challenge out to any racing series that goes – that has their racers go to the Drag Illustrated World Series of Pro Mod next year. Promoters, series directors, anybody out there, man, come out of this race and support it. It is a really cool feeling um, from my seat to be able to watch our racers pull on that racetrack and show out. Sometimes it doesn't go our way. Tommy got beat first round. He really flew the PDRA flag high. But but at the same time, <laughs> man, it's so cool to see your your guys and girls go out and dominate. Whether it's dominating on the racetrack, dominating with the fans in the in the stands, dominating with the fans in the pits, on the top end interviews, on the live on the big screen that's on the starting line, anything like that. That race had a really good feel to it. I got to enjoy it. I was a fan at that event and and really I I don't get to do that enough. And, and from my seat, I want to put a challenge to everybody that's involved in a series, um, whether it's a series director, or race director, whatever, man, come out and support this deal, support your racers, fly your flags high, and let's make it a little bit of smack talk. Let's have some fun with it. I mean, you know, let, let's just go out and have fun. That's how we're going to do this whole thing. That's how we're going to make it all better. I think that that's important. And that yeah. is another thing that we want to foster in this deal, because what I I always I close my eyes and I think about World Series of Pro Mod and I, I daydream and I'm always like chasing this World Cup soccer thing where, you know, the the what I don't know anything about soccer, but team A's got all Messy. their fans. That's it. That's all you, know, you know what I mean? Like uh, <laughs> Pele is out there and all the Pele fans are in the stands yes. like Brazil. Brazil, and then you got all the Mexican fan, whatever. I don't know who's good in soccer, but my point 
is that those flag flying fans, like you don't see that really outside of that. You don't really see it even in football or basketball, or baseball, but that, that international, like we're bringing our community, our culture, everything we represent is, yep. is on display here at this centralized event. And I hope we see that. Like, I want to see Raleigh Miller How and Steve Wolcott. Get- you got to get in MCA flags. I want to see this. Happen. Get like the terrible towels, you know, for the PDR. Yes, thing. I'm so, all in. That'd be, that'd be I'll get, cool. That's next. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we, I, we, I want to see that. Like, ideas. you know, I want it to be, uh, and you brought up Raleigh. I want me and Raleigh to be on the starting line. Like, Hey man, like this is my guy. Like we're going to take you down. But I mean, it's all in good fun. And, and it's all to, like you said, man, it, you're, we're all out here to build the sport. And if we can all go out and support our racers and do the things that we're supposed to do, those racers are going to show up to our race series events. And when the racers show up, they bring fans and everybody wins. So I, I'm all for it. I, I greatly appreciate the platform you all have, have given our racers. It's an awesome platform for them to go out and start the season with. I was hyped up as a fan um, and, and just getting to watch really good racing in March. I got to get away from Virginia and the weather sucked. And the weather was better where y'all were, so I was all in. We enjoy that part of it too, but it it, it is cool. And uh, again, I think I think about those winter circle photos that Mike was talking about. Oh, that was so cool. You, you man. see, what's that do for Derek Ward? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that that I mean, if that doesn't cement your personal relationship with Derek Ward and to, and Tommy's personal relationship, like it goes beyond like those moments. I I tell this to race promoters all the time like be in those winter circle photos Mm -hmm. get doused in champagne do whatever like don't become so dis like desensitized because that is a thing like we get around all these high level racers and these guys that win all the time and you forget that there are tons of drag racers that may only win once in their career Yep. Like that may be the only time they're ever in the winner's circle. They're not Jim Halsey. They're not Jason Harris, right? They're, they're not at that. They're, they don't maybe have the resources. Maybe they don't race as often. And you got to think about that. Like my dad's a good example. He won the PDRA with Justin Kirk driving the car yep. down in uh, Bowling, Green. Bowling Green, Kentucky, a couple of years ago, extreme pro stock. And the first time my dad ever had a race car that won an event with pro on the windshield. And still to this, I mean, in this moment right now, you could call him and ask him about it and he would start crying. I mean, he would literally break down, cry because that's how much that singular moment meant to him. And it's like, you have to stay. Yeah, they are big cries. cries. (laughs) Good point. Yeah, solid point. But it's like, you got to remember how important those moments are to people. Like they may never get it again, you know? And so I I think it's important. I, I always remember looking back at those, you know, the early winter circle photos, I've always had a bit of a fascination with winter circle photos, like seeing who's in them, who was associated with the team at that time versus now, et cetera. And Wally Parks was in all of those photos. You yeah. never had to wonder Wally Parks is in those photos. And I think that type of stuff's really important. I mean, you've got to, it's an opportunity to connect with somebody in this moment of euphoria and they'll never forget it. And what do we yeah. say all the time? Nobody remembers what happens. They remember how they felt. Right. Fact. And that is it's a lesson in all business and all operations. It's, it's not about what happened. No one's going to remember who qualified, whatever those things fade with time, but they'll never forget how you made them feel or how they felt. So. And what was cool there was like, that wasn't even our idea. Like we were there to support. We were there to support. And like, we're like, Hey, look, this is y'all's event. We want y'all to have the deal. And our racers were like, Hey, can we have the flags and y'all in their winter circle? I'm like, all right, that's freaking cool, man. Like that to me, I was like, that just cements it. It, it like, it's not that we did anything. The racers built everything that this thing has been, and and they built the whole family atmosphere and all that. And when they looked at us and they're like, y'all are in the picture. Like, bring the flag. We want the flags in the winter circle. I'm like, all right, that's just badass. Like, it it that, is that's badass, awesome. man. Now, like a totally organic happening. That, yes. Oh, yeah. No, I think that's. Yeah, uh, you guys are great moment. racers. I mean, it'll be tough for these other organizations. Like we just talked about five out of five. Yeah. Just pretty much the baddest racers on the planet are there at Galat for the season opener for PDRA. Such a tough field. You got, like we talked about, some some pretty incredible weather. It looks like rolling in for mm. Friday and Saturday. Um, it's gonna be what fast. are you expecting out of this weekend? I mean, I was actually having a conversation with uh, Eric Holland, who's part of the Vaughn yep. Miles, Travis Harvey squad, and he was he was you know getting my opinion on over under for three sixty five for a bump in Pro Boost, 
And I immediately said, ah, over, it'll be over. But then I started looking at the weather. I look at the cars that are going to be there uh, compared to, to world series and they're lighter than they were at world series. Yep. And it's it, now I'm saying easily under. So what are you expecting this weekend performance wise? And like, who do you have your eye on? Performance wise, I, I'm really glad that this race is at Galad and not at Virginia because there's going to be a lot of burned up pistons probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> the weather looks un unreal. Uh, like you said, you know, we knew we were going to fight a little bit today, but then after that, man, it, it is like chamber of commerce. Perfect for any kind of racing. It's going to be a little chilly in the morning. We'll probably have to delay start times for 30 minutes or so, but I know my team is going to work hard. They're going to do the right moves just like they always do. And, but man, we're going to put it back in the hands of the racers. And, and these, like you've said, the, these teams that come out, they, they don't just race one car. They race multiple cars. They have their hands in multiple cars. And man, these, these things are going to be a beast. Um, I, I, I've, we talked about it last night on PDRA live. There's so many cars to look at. Like we, we joked around last night, we had five people on and we all picked our, who we think is going to win and pro boost. And I was like, hey, can we we can double up Pro Boost because there's at least 10 guys, probably 15 guys and girls that can come out and win the race this weekend. And it's all, like that's how stacked that class is. And I honestly, I, if you told me right now, hey, man, you got to pick somebody and and you, you better get with it. Like it, it's you have to be good on the pick. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't uh, do dude, it. Dude, I'm telling you, Pro Boost is like murderer's row. That is like, Shark it, Tank it, City. It, it, it's unbelievable. Like there's – I'm trying to even think of an analogy. It's like, it's like the light heavyweight division in the UFC once was where like the top 10 were all guys that could be, should be, were world champion. It, it's that it's one of the most exciting classes in drag racing right now and full of a lot of star power too. What it is. are you, how is, is, do you guys enjoy starting the season? Like obviously VMP is something of a home to the, to the PDRA, but Man, Galat, like I can just see the tower in the Galat. background up there. Like I, I think about we talk about Bradenton being like our our favorite honky tonk or drag racing's favorite honky tonk. And I think Galat does this amazing magical thing of, of marrying those two worlds of like the Z Max married with the honky tonk nature trip. of an eighth yes. mile drag strip. Like it's got that intimacy. Um, but it's also got significant seating capacity. It's got the badass scoreboards. It's got badass lighting, like world class racing surface. The tower's obviously spectacular. I mean, is it cool to start your season off like going to a joint like that? It is. You know, Galat's really special. Earl Wells put a ton of time and money and effort into this place about ten years ago. Um, it's now under new or new management with Josh Peak, and and man, they've done an excellent job here. They always have, and, and man, I'm excited to see what Josh can do with this place. Um, like you said, this place has a feel. Just like Bradenton has a feel, you know, it, it's something about an eighth-mile drag strip. I don't know what it is, but it is something about an eighth-mile drag strip. Whether it's nice, whether it's not, whatever it may be, eighth-mile racing facilities, when you can pack them in tight like this place gets for for this event, man, it just has a feel. I rode the scooter through the pits the other day, and I'm like, man, we got to send cars down the racetrack. I'm fired up. Let's go. <laughs> and, man, it was just like you just – you're – you know, when you get to Virginia, there's 10 trailers in a row. There, there's 20, you know, there, there's so many trailers and trucks and all that stuff. And it's packed in tight and all that. But it's a different feel. Like, it, it is something about this place that it's an honor to start our year here. It's an honor to come here twice every season. And to our racers love the place. That there's it just, like you said, this place is awesome as a facility. But not even that, man, this place is awesome as a, like, racing town. Like we yeah. went out, we've been out to dinner three times since we've been here. All three flyers were out on the front desk. People were asking, Hey, y'all are, y'all are here for the race this weekend. Right. And I'm like, all right, like everybody knows PDRA is in town. And that's, and that's so disappointing I mean, when you go to towns that, that, that and they don't know nobody, nobody yeah. knows. It, it, it is. It's such a letdown. And it like is. from my seat, I'm like, well, damn, I bought the wrong radio ads, <laughs> but <laughs> But it's been really good, and and this place is special. And and man, so many people have won here. I see Johnny Placino in the comments. I, they almost had to rename this place Placino Motorsports Park for a while because <laughs> that man won everything here. But man, it's a special place, and and to to, to table up with their staff, uh, with our PDRA crew, and, and man, we always put on a good show. But man, it like you he's said, saying, Virginia he's saying, special, but lots right there. Placino saying that uh, Pro Stock is going to go three nineties. Could we finally it, see that? It, it would be marvelous. Only shot, 
Well, and I'll be honest, it's such a – and I'm going to not knock pro stock, but I'm going to have their back a little bit. They don't get to race in those conditions very often. Yep. And when they do, the racetracks are so different for good weather conditions like this. There's more glue on the racetrack. It's tighter. And that just kind of fights on a pro stock car completely different than it does a pro nitrous or a pro boost car. And, the, you know, the the folder of data for them in, that, in those conditions is very, very narrow. Um, whereas you have a ton of data to go out and go 405, 408, anything like that um, in some normal conditions. So I really hope it happens, man. It, it's It's been talked about for, uh, for it seems like, ever since I got here. Yeah. And and now I'm like, man, can we just get rid of this Liberty yeah. Spears trophy? Well, I That'd mean, they're so, great. they're so dependent on the conditions and barometer yes. especially. So we'll see how that goes. But just pulling it up really quick on weather.com, high 61, low 39, literally – Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So you're going to have consistent conditions this. please. all the way through. Um, we're just going. But yeah, we're, we're speaking into existence. Mike is we, we started. Me, just roll, I, I'm really getting into this. I'm actually going to like send it. an application yeah. in. When you the have the Vanna station. White turn here in a little bit, when you get oh, that yeah, turn dude. like Vanna I think he's got it. I mean, I think he's you, you got to get a you got to get a screen now. I think yeah, we're going to lose him to like the local yeah. uh, Mooresville, North Carolina radio station or something. It's, it's got to be the greatest ABC job in the world. You could, you, they're wrong like seventy five percent of the time, maybe more. You hey, know, you can get away with that at Drag Illustrated too. All, being all wrong all the time. Partly cloudy chance of rain. That's all I got here. Partly cloudy <laughs> chance of rain. Partly cloudy chance of rain. Yeah, it's I mean, pretty. It, but, it seems like it would be hard to screw up. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, and what, I my favorite thing about weather people is, and I don't remember this lady's name, or I would call her out, but back home in Kirksville, Missouri, where I was born and raised, like ten years ago ish, maybe uh, the weather lady, the the meteorologist for KTVO TV three uh, in Kirksville, which was like the local news station. And it was like, it's a big deal. Like the website, everybody like lives on it. it it's a kind of an impressive thing that they have going, but I would always like, if there was a tornado warning or whatever, or a, a tornado, uh, what's the other word? Not warning tornado watch. Uh, watch. Um, she would be on TV and almost like drooling, like, please god let a tornado wipe this place like, oh, yeah. you know like because she wants to report on it so oh, bad like yeah. the, you know there is there's a good chance that an f5 tornado is going to drop down in the city square and we will all be running for our life listen for freight trains that's what's coming and it's like uh, i mean you could just feel her passion and you're like Made okay lady we don't want this to happen Right, like uh, it's like lock your doors. Stay they don't do away watches. From windows. They don't like, do watches out there in the Midwest. Like? It just goes straight to no. morning. It just goes to get in the damn cellar or basement quickly. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Y'all don't have days. basements out there. I right? know we don't. Those days, basements are a Midwest thing. We don't. Yeah. Nobody's got a basement in Texas. No. Yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah, my everybody has a was great. In Missouri. We got a basement and then a storm shelter in the <laughs> right. basement. And then a, a bomb shelter and then yeah. a bunker yeah. secondary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that's that's your sign, JT. You might need to get out of there. Yeah, oh my god, it snowed no today. Chance. What again? It snowed what? again today. Yeah. See, there you go. How many more signs do you need, man? God, I'm sick of it. Tyler, let's talk a little bit about Virginia Motorsports Park. I think we had the oh, news come out yesterday. So, so oh, yeah. we wanted to talk weather, and then yeah. we go straight to uh, Virginia. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> it makes me feel crazy weather <laughs> makes me think VMP. So th let's go straight to that. Hey, the everybody news has out. to have a calling card, okay? I'm yeah, wearing mine strong. Well, this kind of ties in with it, too. The, the, the whole schedule announcement that came out yesterday, oh, yes. the two-day deal, which obviously – we're proponents of because that's what we did at the at the pro superstar shootout yep. packing three days of or three runs of nitro into one day um tell us about that how'd that come about what are your feelings on that and you know weather related to me really only is the is the only potential downfall if weather does strike you know what's the what's the game plan there but other than that i think it's a fantastic idea something that i think we'll, we'll see more of and you guys are kind of the guinea pig for those yeah. that don't know, the NHRA dropped the news uh, yesterday, I believe, that the uh, forthcoming, fast-approaching NHRA Virginia Nationals would feature a kind of a first-ever two-day event format. Um, yes. I don't know that they've ever done that before, and that would include three qualifying sessions on Saturday, uh, followed by elimination rounds on Sunday. So, anyways, if you did, in case you didn't know what was Thank going you, on, Wes. that's, that's uh, the news. Our meteorologist, Thank you. He, he's, not, yes. he's not real good at delivering the news. 
No, Correct. I just like you. He thinks that everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Like JT yeah. will meet a Wes complete is the anchor. stranger and tell him, you know, Jim, my neighbor. And it's yeah. like, <laughs> no, don't know Jim, your neighbor, dude. Well, you I'm will. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. No, it's uh, anyways, JT or gosh, dang it. Tyler, like I always say, what, anybody what, hardcore enough to be watching this show is well, true, generally true. knows the, well, and I, the I goal. Agree. Hold on. The goal here is new fans in the sport listening to what we have <laughs> He's to say. meteorologist these days. I yeah. Swear come He's on. Weird. I'm glad the news anchor, the lead anchor can come in and, and bring the facts. You're somebody, somebody's got to pick it all together. Back to you. Good job, Wes. Yeah, back to me. All right, cool. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I was – Kind of like, oh boy, this is worry because I'm the very one that same thing. You look at it and you go, oh boy, what happens if you get rain on Saturday? Then, then what's the game plan? So, of course, that was a little bit of thing that I brought up in the conversations. Was like, all right, we're we're kind of worried about what's what does this happen? Um, but they the NHRA says they have a game plan for that if if that does become in a, become a problem. Um, but I think it'll be neat. Um, we've we've all had that conversation of it's really hard to get a fan and keep a fan engaged at our, at drag racing at times because of how spaced out our sport can be basically, sure. whether it's track prep, whether it's old downs, whether whatever it may be, um, four day formats, four day formats, anything like that. So the condensing of the show, I think is a good thing. Um, the only thing that I worry about is, is, is I mean, and that's really not even a worry. Um, it, it's kind of like the, Hey, you know, the, the diehard I'm going for the weekend fans that have, that have been going since I was in diapers and, and we were all doing that, you know, you worry what happens there, uh, but at the same time, everybody will adapt and overcome. Uh, and, and like we've all said, we've talked about earlier, you know, you can only control what you can control and controlling the narrative and building this, building that vibe that we all are chasing as promoters to, to make a, make a day feel like it's bigger than really what it is. And I think that's what three runs will do on Saturday. And then you come back on Sunday for, for four rounds of eliminations. And, and they do a really good job of running a good tight ship, um, whether that is sportsman classes that will run on Friday or with whether they're ahead of eliminations at that point, wh wherever they are in, in that. We haven't really looked at the, at the individual run schedule yet. But being able to put that all together along with Pro Mod, Mount Motor Pro Stock, um, and everything else that's going to come to that event, you know, I really think it's something positive. I think there'll be growing pains. There, there's going to be people that don't like it. There's going to be people that do like it. And I'm excited for, and as weird as it sounds, I'm excited for us to kind of be the first one on the NHRA trail to get to hold that because, like you said, I think two, three years down the road, we're going to see more of that. That's what but, I, that's where I was sure. going with it. First thing, do you think that – so they came to you with this concept? Uh yes, they oh, they cool. actually came to us and said, "Hey, what are y'all thought? What are y'all's thoughts on doing this?" We we were and, told, and or we've that. heard that that the racers wanted this, or were I've wondered or, that as well. They voted wondered, on this with NHRA and approved it, and then I guess NHRA then came to you after yep. that vote. Yep, and and, and which I we kind of came in on the on the back side of the racer side of it. I think that happened before we kind of got into it, but at the same time, I think it's a really good deal. Um, and from a promoter standpoint, let's be honest it's a lot easier to sell two days than it is to sell three days. Um, yeah. Especially now with baseball and kids and football and all the, the things you can we do live in the world yeah. that, like that's that. easy to sell. You know, like, it's like easier Jim for Park's us idea. to sell two days. You know, I he says, like it. He says uh, three qualifiers on Friday, last chance qualifier earlier on Saturday, and then elimination starting Saturday afternoon with late rounds I, under the lights and Sunday makeup. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I like day. that. I'm a fan of Saturday racing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, I, I see. Do you think that this is something that we'll see, like, to your point, Tyler, that this is like a, a format that they're – I mean, did they express to you like an ultimate vision? Like, hey, by 2026, we think that, you know, 50% of our events could be two-day happenings or – Not really. No. Um, I, I think I think ours is kind of a trial to see, mm -hmm. hey, how does this go? And, and I'll be honest. I, I'm fully on board with that. I think it can be something that's good. Um, we all know this, you don't know until you try it. And, and if you don't try it, you're never going to know. Um, I like the proponent of, of a Friday, Saturday show. Um, I, there's something about racing finals on Saturday night. I don't know why. Just in front and, of the fans, you know, yes. that's, that's what I want. But you know, Saturday yeah. is your big day. Saturday so is your big why day. not try to pack as much into that as possible? I think yeah. you could go either way with it. I do you think, think so. it's a, do you think it's a savings for the race teams or in, and what does it do for the economics from your standpoint, as far as a promoter or a racetrack? I just wonder what the, 
you know what the uh, benefit analysis is on both sides. I know for a fact that that let's be honest, we're all trying to to cut expense and, and raise income. That, that's the, that's the glory of business. Um, in my opinion, I want to know how that looks on the racer side. Um, does that help the race teams? I don't know. From I mean, from my standpoint, are you not having to logistically put everybody in the in the hotels on on Thursday and now can you come in on Friday? Does that save everybody three hotel nights, a race or or what or a flight difference or whatever that may be? Um, you know, I, I don't really know. I, I want to see what that does. Because I think personally that will be a very big determining factor of does this come back to more races or is this a one time deal and we go back to to what it's been in the past. From a racetrack standpoint, um, your payroll will be different. Um, you know, you don't have to open as many gate windows on a Friday now. Um, you don't have to bring in a, as much things as you would for a pro session on a Friday night. So I, I would say that you're probably, I, I'm going to say it can be a wash on a racetrack because I feel like you may have to ramp up a little bit heavier on a Saturday because now you're thinking my Friday crowd is yeah. now going to roll to Saturday. So you're probably going to overstaff your Saturday compared to where you were. But I'm anxious to see the racer side because I think that's like you said, we had heard that it was a, a voted on deal with the racers. So now at that point, if it's not any savings to them, do they continue to say, Hey, we want to do this or, or do they go back to the three day format? If there's gotta be like, there's I, gotta I, be something. There's gotta be something that they're pursuing, right? Like is so, Q3 under the lights for it is probably. Yeah, yes, I, to, be, so. to my knowledge, Q3 will be under the lights. We have, we kind of requested that as well on our side that, Hey, let's let's do q3 under the lights and and make that a show we we were supposed to use our musco lights that we didn't get to do in 2022 um so we kind of voiced that up like hey we want to have a night session so we can do our light shows with music and stuff like that yeah mm -hmm. that that was that's going to be lit like i need to put that on my schedule yeah, literally lit, lit. <laughs> lit. Literally. Yeah. Have you guys seen you the video? Like, do you guys know <laughs> what i'm talking about like have you seen the deal with with vmp's lights like you're kind of I staring you've seen that hadn't you mike yeah right i, I like mean it's sick i mean it's like a straight up nightclub so basically yeah that was like, okay yeah that was a couple so we, years ago right yes so I thought we've had it recent that's why oh I was no we've had it for a couple of years on. um so we what we do is we just send a song or a clip of a song to musco lighting and they will take the song break it down into their light system and as the song plays over the PA system, the lights on the racetrack will actually go with the beat of the music. Yeah, they so do that. It's here. actually, actually really cool. They do uh, the whole Christmas deal for, at uh, yes. Charlotte Motor Speedway. I think it's probably based off that same. My kids wanted system. me to wire some of that shit up for like five years. They're like, Dad, we want dancing lights. <laughs> Can you make a dancing light display? I'm like, Listen. Your kids are so demanding. Yeah. Like, I love you guys get a lot. At all. Like, no, because then we got to take them down. Yeah. Let's just, <laughs> drive the around. let's just drive around until we find somebody else yeah, that's got the old right. radio station sign in their, in their driveway. That's, what exactly. it's all, that's all you're looking for. You drive around and you look for a 94.5. If you see a sign <laughs> that says some number, you know, you go, hey, and there's right, always one. that watch their lights. There's always one, too. You don't have to be that guy. You just have to no. know the guy. Yeah, I, you just have to know. Or we made friends with one. When my kids were growing up, there was one in Kirksville that we would always go to and we'd roll every night. Max wouldn't go to bed. My little boy turned 16 yesterday, but he literally during the Christmas season wouldn't go to bed if we didn't go see the dancing lights. So I drive him over there, you know, every single night and we'd sit there and he had we had to stay long enough for him to hear this certain song like uh, hot chocolate from uh the train movie with tom hanks that's a question that's as awful as saying no <laughs> yeah the pole, yeah I'm, I'm not a big no guy you know i'm a i'm a he yes guy that. man uh but anyways uh what's it called the the orient express that's not it polar, polar express. express polar express uh slightly different i, had to think, movie, I was like orient express that's not no. it so tom hanks wasn't in the orient i don't express, think you'd even say that you would have sat there a long yeah. time edit, edit that part yeah. out Blake. yeah so yeah, polar anyways <laughs> but that those deals like it blows your mind like in oh, that yeah. like i think about and that the point i was going to make was it's crazy that technology and stuff like that existence exist in our family neighborhoods but like it's crazy we don't see much of that like if you go to a PBR event laser lights pyro mm -hmm. crazy you go to a much the same thing like you go to if yeah. you go to a nightclub they've got freaking lasers and fog machines and flat strobes and all this stuff and I'm going man mm -hmm. you know some of the booze yeah some of these places that we go especially facilities like yours like 
that could you could really do something yeah. special like the intro for a class you know like top fuels coming up and you've got some yeah. light program in and i don't know it's just that's where we miss it we miss the mark a little we bit is just in production value like yep. and unfortunately as good as it get, is getting everywhere else, like all those things I just mentioned, like you see some of those drone shots and helicopter shots of an F1 race. They got fucking Ferris wheels. They got a, a design in the water. They've got, I mean, it's insane. Like ro every roof the sphere. is branded. The sphere. The sphere I mean, yeah. it's just, and obviously we ain't building some $6 billion planet. Yeah, we are. But Get a sphere might. up at VMP. Yeah. Oh, no, no, we could do a small no, one. I got a snow globe. about that. Pilot, we got a lake snow globe. We could backlight it with a flashlight. <laughs> yes. You know, and sphere. Yeah, just put it on and then put it Done. on the, the Megatron. 2.0. You can hold the camera real close to it. Perfect. Hey, it's all Back about boom. the angles. Done. It's all yeah, about man. the angles, baby. Have you seen those people <laughs> who take pictures of model cars and try real hard to make them look real? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you know who like, does a good job of that? Gary Rowe. Very with well, his, with his RC say. cars. Sometimes I'd have to double take because he's got the I whole I remember doing that as a up. kid. I, we, I, I remember my dad, he had this uh, 69 Camaro that we were having. Um, I, I think Good he was gosh. having it back half. It was, it already had a chassis, but a bunch of it was mild steel. And it was a real roof and quarters, steel roof and quarters car. And we took it to this guy in Illinois somewhere. Uh, Steve Comstock was this dude's name. And it was like my first experience with our race car, our family's like pride and jewel, like pride jewel. Um, it being in race car jail, chassis shop jail. Oh, so, it's such a depressing thing. So the car was over there for like months and the racing season is looming. And my dad is like losing his mind. And we end up going over there and my dad shows up and says, listen, we are, I'm not leaving here without that car and it's going to be done. So we literally slept on the floor of this chassis shop, my mom and I and my little brother. We literally slept in the floor uh, of the front room of this dude's chassis shop. And my dad and him worked day and night, day and night for days, days and days and days on end to finish this car. And I mean, we ate at the same little dive restaurant every day, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Like it was it, it was quite the experience. But I would pass the time. My dad, uh, my mom would get me those uh, disposable cameras, right? And I would bring my Hot Wheels, the ones that I brought with me to play with, and I'd set them up and do like a photo shoot. Yeah, do a photo shoot, get down real close, low, trying to make it look like a real car. I mean, I probably have those photos somewhere, man. It was, uh, was those were the story. days. It was it. <laughs> we we're just talking about taking pictures of cars. J it wasn't long JT, ago. where's your chassis shop story? <laughs> I don't have one. Yeah, that's right. Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Take him off the camera, Blake. Take him off. <laughs> yeah. He got it. <laughs> Anyways, I have ah. no idea what we were talking about. Oh, yeah. Is that all we it takes, about by the way, to get kicked off? Yeah, yeah. well, no. That's all JT's that's never been lot, kicked man. off. That's the first threat yeah. of being kicked off that I've ever heard. So we're oh, really? entering that's new okay. grounds here. I'm so proud. Oh, I love JT. He's my but back to VMP, talking about the lights and everything yep. in 22. But you guys didn't have a national event last year, right? And we're returning this year. So, like, was this altered schedule part of that discussion, or this is something that came along after this you guys had already re-upped and decided to? I mean, I guess maybe tell us how the national event got back on the schedule at VMP. Yeah, um, this is a new. I, I will say the the schedule deal was brought in uh, after everything was done. Um, we had kind of taught, had discussions about what do we do with qualifying? Are we still doing a Friday night session and all that originally? Um, but now with with this new deal, um, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. Like, like we talked about, it'll be good. And then you know, bringing the national event back, uh, those things are special to a racetrack. Let's just be honest. Um, there's only a certain amount of, of facilities on the planet that get to host one of those events every year. Um, to get that back on the schedule for us at Virginia is special. Um, it helps with with many things across across our business, uh, from sponsorships to partnerships to, in you know, just the local economy, our, our county, uh, being able to to sell more hotels, sell more more food at our local restaurants, anything like that. You know, it, it's really a a big deal for for our our community and, and our and our area really gets around it. Um, you know, this this year ours is in June. Uh, it's in the summer, but whenever it had been in May, the the high school and all of the county schools closed for the the Friday day of the national. So I mean, it was really cool for for to see everybody in the county really just get behind it, and, and to have that back on our schedule is a cornerstone. Um, everybody knows how how important those are, um, and those events are really special. So we're looking forward to it. We're glad to be back on the NHRA tour, and we hope to stay there for years to come. Do you think that? 
Well, thank you for that because, and I don't know how much you can tell us, right? Because, but it's long since been the story or like everybody's kind of like those of us that are on the inside or whatever. We talk about how the NHRA needs to update their business model. You know, they try to use a one size fits all approach with all these different tracks. Times have changed, blah, 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 blah. We've seen tracks go away. Um, We've seen tracks opt not to do an NHRA Mm -hmm. national event, which I think we did always. Yeah, you did that. I'll say we were, we were the one, one of the ones that said that. And, and, and I think hard. that that is, but that is a huge statement, Tyler, like, because I'm, I'm with you. Like my experience growing up was that every track in the world, like the, the goal, the North star they were chasing was an NHRA national event. And mm-hmm. if they could get one of those on their schedule, everything else it becomes easier, easier or altogether unnecessary. Like it's had that much value, that much impact. Um, but obviously that changed, right? I mean, it it's still a significant thing because I think you're doing like the Lord's work, acknowledging how special it is for a track to have an NHRA national event. And I think it's important that we all recognize the place that the NHRA uh, resides in our sport at the tippy top. Um, but at the same time, it's not to say that there's not room for improvement. It's not time to explore yes. and experiment with new things. And I mean, I'm happy to see them doing the going back to Virginia. Uh, I'm happy to see him doing the, the the three qualifying shot deal on Saturday. Like, I, I love to see him trying some things, even if they don't work out. But to your point, I remember when I went to the NHRA national event, when you guys first had it back a couple of years ago at VMP, mm-hmm. and it was like the everything was packed. Every hotel yes. was packed. Restaurants were busy. That camp, campground right beside the track was overflowing Jam with people, packed. traffic everywhere. And it was, you sense that like, Oh my gosh, this, the Virginia nationals this matter to the people around here. And I think that those are the things that make events special. If you can like hearing you say that they, they closed the school on the Friday of the race. It's like cool, that is a victory. Like that's a feather in your yep. cap forever that you put on an event that had the local schools shutting down. You know what I mean? Those kids are going to be like, hey, uh, ignore all that stuff about the schedule. We still need to get out of school. Yeah. 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 I think it's coming. If I was in eighth grade, I'd be pissed. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, that's the day I could have spent at home. Are you serious? I can sign up for track. You know, it's missing. I'm I'm like, I'm thinking of the kids that ain't even going to the races, just all the ones that want to play video games, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we, we everybody has to have a day, races. man. Come on. Yeah, they deserve it. Right. We work these cards, these kids hard. No, yeah. but uh, no. It, it is We're interesting. Excited. Did you like, so does a situation like this, and if you're willing to talk about it, is this like an experimental one year deal or you guys feel committed to the future? Cause you made some good points. Yeah. Like I can't imagine how much easier it is to sell year long sponsorships at VMP. Oh, no, having an NHRA event on the schedule versus not like it, it automatically it's a game changer. inflates the value, not inflates, but in, in, uh, increases the value yes. across the board. Like your suites are more valuable. Your C's, you know, all mm-hmm. those things are more valuable, uh, because of it. So, but did it you is. have to, like, are you looking forward to like years two, three, four, and five is, or do you foresee this mm-hmm. being kind of a date that you guys really latch onto with the NHRA moving forward? Oh, uh, we hope so. I, I will say that um, I know this is just a one-year deal for right now, but we all both sides have plans to continue. Um, we wanted to go into to things to where it's, hey, look, we're all going to do something different. We're all learning things here. We may have to change things around in a contract, and we don't want either side to feel like, oh, man, we're latched into a contract that's not yeah. good for, for either side. You know, everybody has to win in these deals to make them continue going forward. And that was our biggest fear coming off of some of the ones that we'd had in the past was like, man, like, why don't we're committed and you're committed, but it, let's make sure we make everybody's life happy and, and make everything work on the business side because we're not a one and done group. I'm not, Tommy's not, Gavin's not clearly, you know, you know, we're, we really want to see this be a deal where it's 10 years down the road. We're still talking about, Hey man, you remember 10 years ago, we did that, that deal that everybody said that we shouldn't do. And the qualifying is all on Saturday and all that. But and I hope that's where it is. And I hope we, we continue to to do things different. And and I'm the guy that I'm okay being outside of the box. I like being different. I like doing things that don't look like everybody else's um, because we do a really, we do a really good job in drag racing of everybody making everything look the same. So I'm really happy and excited to be the one national event that looks different in, in 2024. So I'm, I'm, I'm anxious happy to with see like excited. being that, being that these things weren't announced like simultaneously, I'm anxious to see if this is like, if we will see this pop up again 
in, uh, in 2024 yeah. because it's not like they announced VMPs back on the schedule and we're going to do this new format. They mm-hmm. Those were staggered releases. One thing happened before the other, and I wonder if we won't see get a little later into the season and, and see this pop up again. Clearly, I mean, I'm – I I'm am. claiming royalties right now. I want it, for Mike. You. <laughs> Mike, do you think that? What do you think? Why do you think it matters to racers? Like, I'm just curious because I honestly thought when we pitched it um, to the pro group for the Superstar Shootout, I I thought we'd get pushback. I mean, that's a lot of running in mm-hmm. one day. These cars were might require a trend, tremendous amount of maintenance, specifically top fuel and funny car. Yeah. Uh, I thought we'd get pushback, and there was none. There was like pure cool. excitement well, across the well, board. ours was out of but, necessity if you yeah. remember because of the super bowl on sunday so yeah. we all of a sudden were faced with condensing the schedule and figuring it out and uh, i think it worked out great and we did not receive any pushback and i think that the teams i mean as far as what they're looking for out of it it is probably just travel logistics yeah. and hotel and maybe just a less one less day on the road or, or away from the shop if that how that factors that's, into that's the economics huge, yeah. yeah so um, but again, and also just the commitment of all these people to have to be gone for the, that number of days, we see it with local races, with PDRA races. That's why you guys don't do a, you know, mm-hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you have optional exactly Thursday why. testing, you have Friday qualifying, you got Saturday eliminations, Sunday is a rain day, but usually is a travel day. So everyone can get back home and be back at work on Monday. On Monday so morning. that that's a little bit more in the favor of the working class racer which is what the and PDRA i think is. i think you and, and the spectator as well though true yeah. that's yes. true as well 100 we and we saw that with world saturday series because we're making for, that change as well yeah 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 I, I love the saturday night stuff because i mean everybody's there the house is packed you know give them, you're, you're trying to put on a show for them let them see those eliminations let them see that emotion come out after after somebody wins you know i mean yeah and i think that's actually why we changed the world series it was really we saw the the crowd that we had on Saturday night and like the crescendo of that round of qualifying. And then it's like, but the big show is tomorrow. Well, the big show Friday, should be, it, it should really be tonight. Vibe. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. I was jealous. I was like, my boys hit this out of the park. Friday and Saturday was a vibe at World Series of Pro Bond. And it, I'm, it, I'm excited about the schedule change there. It's buzzing, man. It buzzes down there. And that's like the thing that we're going for. A, a couple of things I want to I want to touch on. And we uh, let me real quick, guys. I do want to remind you guys that each and every episode, kind of as we cross the halfway mark of today's show, I want to remind you guys that each and every episode of the West Buck Show is made possible by way of our friends at Stroud Safety. If you're in the racing world, you know how critical safety is. It's not just about speed and performance. It's about making it home to your family at the end of the day. And that's where Stroud Stafey steps in. Led by Tommy Cunningham and his dedicated team, Stroud has been a pillar in our community, offering nothing but the best in drag racing safety equipment, all 100% made in America. Remember to support those who support you. Log on to StroudSafety.com today and tell them we sent you. And while we're talking about support, I want to remind you guys that the West Buck Show is also presented by Redline Synthetic Oils. Now, I've been a car guy for as long as I remember. And if there's one thing I know, it's the lifeblood of any machine is it's oil. Redline doesn't just make oil. They engineer it since 1979. They've been at the forefront of lubrication technology, creating products that perform and protect better than anything else out there. Whether it's 11,000 horsepower, top fuel engine, or your lawnmower or somewhere in between Redline has the lubricants and coolants you need. Log on to Redline oil today, Uh, redlineoil.com today. Tell Mark Beatty and the guys we sent you. They're also the official oil of the drag illustrated world series of pro mod and the title right sponsor of the professional drag racers association 2024 tour guys uh i want to going back to what you were saying mike that i thought really like struck me and i think is is correct is do you think that this move to the two-day format is somewhat representative of nhra getting a little bit more tuned in to who their customer is in 2024 because it's like i've had many exper- exchanges with people in that camp and just uh, people at the higher levels of drag racing about how times have changed like we don't necessarily have a pit full of john forces guys that earn their living drag racing you know if they're not at the racetrack they're at a display or an appearance somewhere at a trade show or convention a large percentage of the people, and I thought we should have this prepared, but uh, and I may try to pull it up while we we get to chat in here. But I, I don't know what percentage of NHRA top fuel funny car pro stock teams earn their living racing, but it's not a big one, right? And so I wonder if this is reflective or representative of the NHRA kind of recognizing, like, hey, 
we've got to make this work for these guys. We don't want them to miss three, four days from work. We don't want them to miss, you know, Thursday, Friday at the bare minimum, and probably also Monday. This is an opportunity to turn this into a long weekend, a four day weekend. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a good point. We didn't look at it from that perspective, but that makes a lot of sense. And I also wonder if there was a thinking that that you it was you know too much stress or you could not have three runs in one day for the nitro teams and we we proved that with the pro superstar shootout that you can and it also does kind of force that that third qualifier to be a night run which is another thing that we talked about and we really um prioritized with the pro superstar shootout was having night racing with these nitro cars so a lot of times that the um the NHRA national event is spread across three or four days and it's over by like 4 p.m. or 5 p.m., which I feel like is a very off-putting thing. I think it's good for the teams and it's good for executives. It's good, it's good for, for Capital Grill. It's, it's good for, for the bonefish. Right? It's good for yeah. bonefish. Absolutely. You know? it, but the fans that have committed or taken a day off work and kind of want to see you know, optimum performance of these cars, that happens at night. That happens at sunset. And, and I want to like, see some we're done. fire Flames. hanging out of them sons of yeah. bitches, right? Exactly. I mean, that's the whole point. That's I mean, the I've, whole I've, point. I've been caught off guard at multiple NHRA national events. I'm kind of like gearing up, like here comes the the night deal, or you know, we're, we're going to be here for the rest of the evening because that's what I'm used to having run PDRA or local quick eight stuff. And it's like, no, nope, we're done. That's it. Q Q2 or Q4 for the nitro cars is over. It's, it's 5 over. p.m. Let's get out of here. And then I'm yeah, like, like I I hardly know what to do with myself, yeah. you know, on a weekend where we're not at the drag strip till late at night like it's yeah. very very uh interesting there's a comment here some sportsman racers are not happy with the format check bobby fazio's podcast from last night i'll have to check that out because yeah. i'm curious well, i think there's because I think I, there's, what it, how does it impact confusion the yeah there's I, I there's a, a little there's bit of lack confusion. of information out there around the sportsman schedule and the pro mod schedule that's another yeah. one and I'm mountain motor pro day. stock which maybe you could give us a little bit of insight on that if you have it in our will. I don't have it. I was wondering. Okay. Um, but I do know Friday will be a lot of sportsman racing. Um, I don't see that program changing at all. Um, I think that program will pretty much stay the same as it has at past Virginia national events and at others. Um, I, it's funny, Mike, you bring that up. We just had that conversation this morning of like, ooh, I wonder do they make like a Friday night, like door slammer Friday night marquee deal. Um, and put Pro Mod and Mount Motor Pro Stock on kind of a spectacular Friday night. I've I've something. been along. I, I like I, to be honest, man. And I'm going to do something of this at World Series next year. I've got an idea I'm cooking up, but I, I think that I've often thought like I've made a pitch to the Real Pro Mod Association back like ten years ago uh, when they were like the liaison or had the relationship with NHRA for Pro Mod. I said, what about why couldn't why couldn't Pro Mod be like the the co main event? Like, let's be okay. Like, I always feel like I think Pro Mod is the highest level of grassroots racing. It's the highest level of sportsman racing. And why couldn't we just be the main event on Saturday night? And then you've got, a, you know, you've got the Nitro and Pro Stock and all that on Sunday. I like that idea. Like, I've got no problem with that. And it builds it. It goes back to Rivals Night and all the things where every day or every day of your event kind of has a standalone. Well, it sounds good on paper, thing. but they're promoting this Saturday, Sunday thing. Right. So it's going to be like, it does. Hey, let's run a promo. Oh, it wouldn't work on, on that day that we're it, not. It wouldn't promoting. work on, it wouldn't work at right. VMP. I'm more just yeah. talking about like in general, in general. like, cause yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I've even saying. thought, I think a case could be made to do that with pro stock. You know what I mean? Just, I know that there is a guilty by association that is extremely valuable to pro stock racers. Like I have learned this over the course of many years here that like, it's important to them to be mentioned in the same breath as John mm -hmm. force and Ron camps and Antron Brown and Leah Pruitt. Right. Um, but we also kind of, I think are required to kind of be self-aware and know where we fit into this machine, you know? And I think that it would be wise to at least explore some of those things where, I, I don't ever want to label it like the Bush series, right? Because it's Correct. definitely not the yeah, it's next not. tier down, but like NASCAR. But I could make a case for Pro Stock running on Saturday night under the lights and making that, you know, a, a standalone attraction where like, and it would, you'd learn from it too. Like you'd learn about yeah. your ticket sales. You'd develop your fan base a little bit more. You'd give them something special on, you know, for the hardcore door slammer guys or the hardcore died in the wool Pro Stock fans. You know, you'd give them something special and you'd see how it impacted your ticket sales and you'd learn mm -hmm. a little bit of something moving forward. Maybe you don't stick with it, but I, I remember so. at, uh, I remember being in, uh, I was in Las Vegas when the news broke a few years ago that the NHRA pro stock schedule was going to go from 22 to 18 oh, yeah. or 23, I think at the time to 18. 
And it was like largely celebrated, but there were a handful of people that were like real bummed out about it because they felt it. It felt it knocked them out of the conversation of a pro racer, like a full time pro racer. Like, well, do you do the same thing as as John Force? Well, I do, but I don't race as often as him. Like, I do think that guilty by association. I think it's important mm-hmm. to them to be in the staging lanes with those guys on Sundays, and like, there, there's all of that, right? Well, let's bring on. We've got another guest in the green room. I was fixing to say this. green room. Let's, let's, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, undoubtedly candidate for NHRA's Rookie of the Year Award in 2024, 17-year-old pro stock sensation, Sienna Wild Gus. What's going on? Not much, you? Ah, swinging and ducking. You know how we do around here, right? We're looking for <laughs> hey, trouble. <Sienna. laughs> looking for trouble. Hey, thanks for joining us. I'm sorry. I, you're a perfect fit for this conversation right here. Like, I know you're yeah. – uh, first off, congratulations. Like, yeah. holy moly like i know folks that have worked their whole life and never qualified for an nhra pro stock race so like guys let's this yeah, this is unbelievable sure. 17 years old uh, i mean my son is just turned 16 yesterday and i wouldn't let him sit in a pro stock car i wouldn't <laughs> let him sit at one on projects right let alone let him make Wait, a rip in one and i can't say enough about i can't your parents your pops man a, a world series of pro mod vet at this point uh one, one of the with the toughest teams out there he's got to be over the moon right now what what i, I want to ask you some of these like bring you into this conversation that we're having but what do you is this surreal it's got to be surreal it's definitely surreal i mean this has always been my dream and i thought maybe when i was in my 20s or my 30s that it would be possible, but being 17 years old, you know, I just want to be that role model to other young people, especially the females out there, then to show them that it doesn't matter your age. Um, if you're driven and you have the passion for it, that it's possible. And I'm still over the moon. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy to see, like you're out there and doing a fantastic job. Like it's no yes. secret. I measure everybody by their burnouts and <laughs> y- y- I, I really you. do. I was like, just going to bring that up. If I'm not praying for the valve train of your engine after a burnout, like that's a good sign. Right. <laughs> and I, I just, you're doing a great job staging the car consistently. So many things that I'm noticing. Uh, and I haven't even been there to watch up close and personal. I'm watching along on NHRA.TV or on Fox, but incredible to see you uh, already like catching your stride and, and being a difference maker out here it says a lot about being a, fa- a generational racer, right? This is, this is not anything new to you. I am curious, like I, I knew you know you were in the green room. We were having a conversation about the VMP announcement that the NHRA Virginia nationals this year would be moved to a two day format. I'm sure you're familiar. I'd love to get your opinion on two things. One, three runs in a day, like just what your thoughts are on that for a, a full, uh, you've, you, uh, you've seen it done before. Right. Uh, but, and then secondly, how you think as a, as a team owner or, or a driver that's out here se- looking for sponsorships, seeking business opportunities, could you maybe share with us a little bit about how that shortened format affects the business of, of Sienna wild Gus racing? Yeah, for sure. So I do think the three runs in one day is a really good idea. Um, It can be done. It's been shown, you know, on Sundays for race days, we're up there making more than two runs a day. So I think it's definitely possible. Um, It's going to be difficult, but I think that our teams can do it. Um, We can turn those cars around in less than an hour. So I think it'll be good for us. And the big thing with racing is that a lot of the work is done away from the racetrack. So sponsorships, marketing, and all that kind of stuff is done away from the racetrack as well as at the racetrack. So as somebody who has a team and is with KB Titan, I think that keeping it shortened as much as you can is going to really help us because we can go back to the shop and have longer to do some engineering and some stuff with the guys in the cars. Um, so I definitely think it'll be cool to see how it plays out, and I'm excited to see what happens with it, and I'm really hoping that it can continue. I'm excited to see how it goes as yeah, well. Those I'm, are some good points, actually. I, I was mean, getting man. back to having more time in the shop yeah. for, for these teams. That's actually a really good point. That too. And then even from a driver's standpoint, and I'll even bring this up, from a racer standpoint, I feel like I would stay more engaged making more laps in a day. Um, not that being 020 or 010 on the tree and qualifying means anything, but it gives you confidence as a driver going to race day, and I think that's going to make a difference as well. I completely agree with that. Do you think, I'm curious, biggest surprise, like you're what, two races, three races in? No, two. Two. 
Yeah. Two yeah. races in to your NHRA pro. Yeah. Headed to your third this weekend at the NHRA Arizona Nationals in Phoenix. Um, which side note, everybody boohooed for six months that Wild Pass, Wild Horse Pass was going away. And lo and behold, they're having there a are. drag race this weekend. So we gotta we gotta be mindful of these things as we move forward, folks. Like yeah. things get sold, real estate deals happen, but, but if there's a will, there's a way. So, anyways biggest surprise like what has been the most surprising thing to you after two races <clears throat> and what eight ten runs in competition in nhra pro stock i did mean, say the biggest surprise was how nice and welcoming and friendly everybody was um it's not what i expected you to say. yeah I, I was actually gonna ask something along those same <laughs> yeah, lines solid <laughs> Even though we do have some rivalries with other teams, um, everybody at the top end has been super supportive and nice, and they've always told me good luck and that I'm doing a really good job. So that was definitely, I would say, the most surprising and shocking thing was that at the top end, everybody's just like family, and they're all just super nice to me. Well, I guess along those same lines, you're kind of the third uh, prominent female to join the pro stock ranks, uh, along with Camry and, of course, Erica. How have they received you and how has that been? And is it, has it been open arms, you know, like you said, with the rest of the teams? Yeah, so definitely with both of them, they've been super nice to me and they've been showing me some tips and tricks that I can do. And I actually had a conversation with Courtney and she made a good comment. We were talking about Erica and everything and she goes, cars don't know gender. So that was a huge thing that kind of stuck with me that Courtney said. And it's super true that, you know, at the end of the day, when we go out there and we race with these guys, they, they don't know gender. You know, it's a car versus a car, and that will show at the end of the day. It's, I think it's the, it's the unsung hero of our sport is the diversity that exists in this community. Like, it, 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 it crosses all boundaries. Like, I make parallels and draw – or draw parallels in, in, uh, constantly, but I'm – what other sport can you have this high level of competition, right? Really, truly meaningful competition and have it have a 17 year old girl competing against a, a, a 38 year old man, right? Like every race creed color is represented. It's like a really amazing thing. And I go back to like what Sienna was saying about just knowing that being driven enough and it doesn't have anything to do with whether you're a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. like if you want it bad enough, you can have it. And I think about, you know, as the father of a nine year old girl, like that's the way I want her to view the world. I don't want her to go out there looking for a handout or thinking that someone's going to help her out because she's a girl or because she's pretty or be whatever. Right. I want you to go out there and know that you can have whatever you want as long as you're willing to work as hard as anyone else, if not harder for it. And I think that that it, it's just an empowering thing to hear because we're in a world of everybody having their excuse. Like everybody's got a built in excuse for why they suck or why their life sucks or why nothing's happened in their life. But it's like you, anybody can do it. We've seen it a, a billion different times. Like success comes in every shape, size, color. I mean, it's unbelievable. What do your friends say to you? Like, what do your high school classmates say to you? What do you say to the, like, I know what that the, as well. the girls that you hang out with? Like my, my daughter's <laughs> like the social chair of Coder elementary. Uh, like she's got this click, this gang she runs with, right? Like yeah. I'm sure you've got a half dozen girlfriends that, that you guys run around together. What do they make of this whole situation? Um, I think for a lot of them, it's hard to kind of understand what it actually is. Uh, when I say, oh, I'm going away to go racing, I think they don't really understand how big of a deal it actually is. Um, but it's kind of nice to also go home and be around those people and being able to just talk about other stuff. Um, you know, racing is my life, but it is sometimes nice to just go out with my friends and not be the talk of the talk, which is really nice. But I don't think they really understand what it is but i try and help them understand but they don't know which is no, like one thing one thing that i was just sitting here thinking about was when we were talking about the women in sports and how how everything's you know the car drives a car it, it doesn't know the difference look at right now and and i'm a i'm a basketball fan and, and all that but look at how strong women's sports are right now with like Caitlin Clark and, and all oh. of the way that the women's basketball thing's going. Women are getting so much more attention in sports right now. It's awesome to see. And like now I think that shows our sport, hey, we've been ahead of all we've the We've been other ahead sports. of the curve. We've been we've... ahead of the curve. We're always talking about how we're behind the curve. We've been ahead of the curve for so many years on the women in, in racing and all that. And and now to kind of put that alongside, you know, 
I watched a meme or something this morning that popped up on my phone that the women's final four tickets are almost double the price of the men's final four tickets. I think and they awesome. should be. And, and the I mean, ratings for that game too, they outpaced twelve point three million. Yeah, they outpaced the NBA final. Insane. Yeah. I mean, it's for me. I'm going. A. It tells me a couple things. And I got it. There was a comment here that I want to reply to that it talks about it takes money, but it, of course everything does, but uh, to some extent. But that also shows me the power of a star. Like when you like yep. that is the kind of transformative thing that can happen when you have bona fide stars involved in what's happening. And what I like is the way the NCAA, ESPN, and every other you know needle mover in the stick and ball sports world has embraced they this have. story, right? They like they're going, away. they didn't push it away, they didn't turn a blind eye to it, they didn't because I think about you know the the way NHRA, the mantra, the cars are the stars, the cars are the stars, the cars are the stars. I mean, that'd be like saying the hoops and the ball are the stars of the NCAA Final Four. It's it has yeah. nothing. I mean, they're a necessary thing right they've got to be there but it's the players that are the stars of what we're doing out here and i think i've seen other sports be really resistant like i've seen nhra do it where they pour cold water on people that are developing a personal brand that runs the risk of superseding theirs whereas the smart operators in in the world and especially in sports they're going "Uh oh oh there's one we need to not pour water on it pour fire on it and we will we will ride with them and oh, by the way, go. here's a hat. Wear that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a it's a great thing that they have done. I mean, I was glued to that Iowa Iowa game. Like, I was glued too. to it. Watched the whole game. My whole family watched the game. My son and daughter are in there watching it. And it's like, that doesn't happen. We It was as if the Super Bowl was happening, you know? And what a moment. And to think about those girls on LSU and all those girls on Iowa being a part of that moment and generating the most watched basketball game in the history of, uh, of, of NCAA women's basketball. And like Mike said, outrunning the NBA finals, like, yes. holy moly. And, the and World a lot of Series? other sports as well. Yeah. It's a, the, it's it, the, the correlation between what we're saying about drag racing and these sports is so true. We have been ahead of the game. I think what's interesting, I'm trying to, I'm just racking my brain and going through, you know, various classes in drag racing and really pro stock is the one that's lagged behind in female participation. And really Erica is the trailblazer for that. What was your determining factor Sienna in getting involved in pro stock versus pro mod or really any other division? What drew you to that? And why do you think it's taken so long for pro stock to kind of gain traction with, with young female racers? So I always knew I wanted to drive professionally. So I knew that I either had to pick or pro stock <coughs> in NHRA. And the one thing that I found really interesting about pro stock was the fact that we call them real race cars. Cause you know, you have to shift and you have to do the work as a driver. And I'm also the kind of person that I like feedback and I like to, like, I'm never content at where I'm at. Like I always like these constant improvements and the constant feedback. So for me, you know, you could think you're on a perfect run, but when you go back on the computers, you know, your shifts could be a little bit off. The way you stage the car could be a little bit off. And I like that about it. And I like the fact that there's always improvements and changes that you can make as a driver. And I'm really content with it right now. I think that there's no class in drag racing that is impacted more so by the ability of the driver than pro stock. And I, I think that's the beauty of the class for sure. And it's, I think it's, I mean, personally, and I'm not like calling anybody out cause here we have this big whole conversation about diversity and I stand by it, but I do think that across the board, it's, it's not that often that you see super fresh faces, man or woman show right. up in pro stock and because yeah. this shit's hard. This shit's hard. Like I know people that are like able-bodied individuals, able-bodied drivers, like that have had moderate success in other categories, get in can't a pro stock it. car and can't do a burnout. Yep. Like it's a different thing. Like I've had, I mean, Steve Matusik, I remember one of the things that he, whenever he made, it was a huge deal. He, he did like a three or seven race deal with elite motorsports to drive NHRA pro stock a few years ago in 2019. And I made a point to go to a bunch of the races with him because I knew he was living out a childhood dream to to race pro stock. And I wanted to be there with him for it. But Steve, uh, he told me like he couldn't believe. I mean, this is a guy who's driven everything, bl everything, blown everything. Pro Hemi, Pro Mod, Turbo Pro Mod, everything. He was, dude, the thing that blew me away is how loud it is. 
like, cause people don't also like all these pro my guys are used to the exhaust pointing away from the car, like whether it's bullhorns or zoomies or whatever. I mean, the, the headers are hitting the firewall. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that was an interesting thing. You're turning these things 10,000 RPM. It's uh, it, it is, it's a, it's a different place to be. And I think it speaks to like, anytime I see someone such as yourself, Sienna, uh, Camry Crusoe, uh, Erica Enders, of course, I mean, it's just cool see, seeing anybody choose to do it yeah. the hard way. Like yeah. you're choosing, you're choosing to do it the hard way. There's no doubt about it. And I'm not discounting any, you know, the, the ability and courage and talent that it takes to drive any drag racing car at a meaningful level. But, uh, I do think it's cool. And I was going back to our women in sports. How cool is it that arguably the greatest to ever do it in NHRA pro stock, a class that has long since been dominated by men is a woman is Erica Enders. Yeah. Like she's literally in the conversation as greatest of all time. We're there's no conversation, at least in this moment, that's putting Caitlin Clark on the NBA Mount Rushmore. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I just think that that's how special and how far ahead of the curve we are in drag racing yep. that literally a sport, a living legend in our sport is a female. And I think that that's she's not here participating. She's not an also ran. She's not a participant trophy award winner. She is a legitimate goat out here. And that I mean, it's it's really a cool thing. And I'm sure that's I mean, that's got to be inspiring, Sienna. It is for sure. I grew up watching Pro Stock and watching Erica, and now that I'm able to compete with her, it's such an honor, and she deserves where she's at and all the hard work that she's put in, and dang, she's a really good driver, and I'm thankful that I have a communication with her, and I can text her, and I can talk to her about any questions that I have, and I really value being her friendship and how far we've came together, and I, in Gainesville, she was nothing but nice to me. And then in Pomona, she gave me a big hug after I qualified, and she said she was really proud of me. So that was amazing to hear from her. Awesome. It's, it really is mm -hmm. awesome. I mean, I'm telling you, qualifying in pro stock, no one's ever going to be able to take you, that away from you. Yeah. And, and it, there's it's, a lot of people that have never gotten to be above that line. So that don't let that knock either, because that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, because I, I mean, I've, I, we've been that guy where we're like, we were the first car out. So, like, yeah. somebody take a picture of the qualifying sheet with our car, at the, our number at the top <laughs> we of it. We were close. You know what I mean? Somebody go on Drag Race Central and screenshot that, you know, because <laughs> we're number one for a millisecond, right? Uh, but, I mean, it's it, it really is an incredible thing. Sienna, I know you guys are, like, working on securing new deals and stuff and that you've got, like, a plan to run a limited – Series, uh, limited season here in 2024 based on your early success here. And we all know drag racing is a hero to zero type of operation. It can be very humbling, but how are you feeling about things? I mean, it, it, from the outside looking in, looks like things are going well. I see different logos popping up on the car. I see you po posted on social supporting different brands. So like, how's, how's it going? And what do you, what's your forecast for the, for the next few months, if not years? So we're good up until Charlotte. So technically the first five, we're secured for. And then after then, we are still currently looking for marketing uh, partners. Um, it is very expensive to do what we're doing. So we're trying to reach out to as many people as we can. But after Charlotte, we're hoping that we can continue and run a full season. Um, but as of right now, it's not 100% for sure. Well, well we hey. got to at least make sure we get you to Virginia. Let's just go yeah. with that. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta be there for that one, right? We gotta make that happen. It's crazy though. Like, why don't you share like one of the things that I think is probably one of the most prominent, and we won't keep you too much longer, Sienna. We appreciate your uh your willingness to come on here and chat. But do you uh any like big surprises or shocking revelations in the sponsorship hunt? Like that's something that we get. I mean, if we get asked I mean, constantly about sponsorships, right? Like everybody uh, seems to have a different approach to these things or a different understanding. Like what has been that experience like for you thus far? Like, I know you've, you, you guys are lucky and blessed to have had some considerable sponsorship relationships in the past. Like what, what, what's that experience been like? It's been really good. Um, our family's model has always been be humble and to be kind and that things will work out. So we've been trying to throw enough stuff out there to hopefully have something stick. Um, but we're very thankful for the partners that have came on board, um, Applied Racing Technology, Team Wild Gus, uh, Jesse Global Emissions. And we're hoping that we can continue to create partnerships with other companies as well as ones we currently have so that we can make it to the end of the season. But we have a couple things in the works right now. Um, so we're really hoping that those go through. But yeah. 
You've done a good job of it for sure. Thank and, you. And, and keep up the good work. Cause I mean, it's, and, and Wes, you preach on it a lot and I, and I'll be the one to, to throw the, throw the condolences and all the, all the appreciation to you. You've done a really good job on social media of, of talking your people. And, and let's be honest, a lot of people miss that boat on the, on the marketing side of, Hey, I've got this person that's on for a three race deal. That can be a year deal if you do it the right way. So you're doing the right thing. Keep up all the good work. We're all proud of you. That's for and, sure. And it's 17 years old. Yes, I mean, that's the best part. That's like you're doing yeah. an awesome job. Thank and you. That, that's coming from three people that came into the sport at that age as well. I I've, I've said it already. I've even told your dad. I'm like I'm excited to see the next 10 years of Sienna Wildcats in a race car because it's going to be good. Same, same. Do you uh, is there? Do you have any interest in pro modified drag racing? Yeah, she wants to beat her dad's ass in a race. Hell yeah, she does. That look says it all. She didn't want to say it. <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, I would definitely be open to it. Uh, but dad right now is not. He says absolutely not. But I do think that I could convince him to do a burnout. And I think at that point, he'd probably just lock the door and tell me to go. But he doesn't want me in a pro mod. But maybe one day we'll get there. Did, yeah, was man. That a, I, hey, was that a sense of fear? Was that what that was? I, I, I got to tell you, I want, I need that clipped out, Blake. Like, because <laughs> what, what we're fin to do is remind everybody that it's a whole thing. Like, there's levels to this shit. Sorry. Yep. Like, I mean, it's like, hey, we're going to keep you safe. We're, that's what we're going to do, Stan. We're going to keep you safe. And then here in the coming years, we'll, we'll let you know when we feel like you're a certified badass. And we'll strap you <laughs> with those bad boys. But exactly. no, I'm just playing. Like, I, I have to do that. I decided, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to lean 100% into the pro mods better than everything thing. I tried to not do that because we did the pro race. Right. And then I'm like, nah, felt inauthentic. <laughs> felt inauthentic, you know? Um, so I'm just going to lean into this. But no, pro stocks probably is my second favorite class behind pro modified. And I, I would argue that there is nothing sweeter than the song of a 500 inch engine coming out of the water uh it, it, tickling the the rev limiter like that is the the sweetest sound that exists in drag racing or, go, or going into high gear going yes. through the ah, yeah. oh i, this, I ask yeah. this question all the time what do you start your burnout in third gear yes okay you know erica starts hers in second yes and and she's pretty much the only person that i have personally encountered and i mm -hmm. ask i ask that question to every single pro stock person I've ever talked to. Um, and she's the only person I know. And do you she, remember her answer as to why? I think it was Bob Glidden had her doing that. I thought it was something that like that the equipment that she was in to start her career, she had to start it in second to get the, to get the burnout going the way she wanted. No kidding. Really? Something. Yeah. Something to that effect. That's pretty cool. She, I think she answered that question that on our show. It was something, it could have been something like that too, but I just think that, it's because she started back in a, you know, a different era. Erica. Okay. We'll hey, find out right now. Hey, you're on, we're doing my show right now. Like, so we're live on the internet. Why do you do your, who taught you to do your burnout? Like start your burnout in second gear. Cause I was just telling Sienna wild Gus that like <laughs> that I, everybody I've ever met starts we'll, in third gear, we'll but see. you told me a specific right. story. Can I put you on speaker? Yeah. I feel so missing okay. out right now. Here you go. Go ahead. When I was learning to drive, Tommy Lee was my driving coach, um, and he that's how he taught me. So I'm a creature of habit, and that's what I do. I think I'm like the lone soldier left that starts their burnout. Has anybody ever but, tried? But why did Tommy Lee? That? Why did Tommy Lee you know, start it in second? No, until I screw up a burnout, I don't think they should tell me anything. <laughs> well, fair enough. Fair enough. And did Tommy? <laughs> I mean, did Tommy Lee have reasoning for why he wanted you to do it that way? Um, that's how he did it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, I, and it's he probably because he I mean, started in a different era where you had to start. He, in was, awesome. he was a really good coach and he's Great driven, guy. you know, five, 500 inch and mountain motor. And, um, he's just, he's awesome. Him and Steve culture were the guys that signed my license back in 2004. So, oh, man. but yeah, I, uh, that's how they taught me and that's how I do it. Well, killer. Thank you for sharing. I'm sorry to just randomly call you. I'll call you later. Thanks a bunch. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, bye -bye. <laughs> well, I had to know. So, I think right. it, it, if Facts I had to guess, it's because Tommy Lee has been doing it forever, started back in the days where, where you had to start in second. So yeah. I'm going to take partial credit for that. JT knows that I was going to, I was going to work you hard. You think you invented doing a burnout in second gear? No, I didn't. I didn't think I invented oh, it. Oh, okay. I thought I you were it, like. I think it dates back to the early to days. The early days. Oh, and it's yeah, something yeah, yeah. that uh, is carrying on from the early days. Well, back in the early days, they probably didn't have enough power that's what to I'm do a burnout. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Not enough. We have to start. Mike. So Mike, I'm you were ahead by about five minutes. <laughs> yes, well, I'm trying to talk Welcome. to I'm trying to talk on the phone, Mike. 
<laughs> Jeez Louise. All right. So anyways, Sienna, are we, uh, I was great to see you at the world series of pro mod. I appreciate you being down there cheering us on. Um, I, I am the client of closing notes. I'm assuming your father, I, he told me this whenever he called me a couple weeks ago, but I forgot. Um, he's foregoing PDRA season opener, right. To be out with yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Wait, is yeah. he running and he's running HRA pro mod, right? He's running um, PDRA, NHRA, and also NMCA. So he's doing like a hybrid schedule. He's gonna so is he racing Phoenix this weekend? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think he told me he was starting in Charlotte, right? Oh, okay. I think. Or, yeah. So anyways, and how crazy is it that they're running ProMod in Phoenix? Real it quick, is we'll weird. get everybody's thoughts on that. It's the super weirdest thing ever. I didn't see it coming. Me either. <laughs> if so, I would have probably been I a little bit different on schedule, but yeah. dang. I, I think what's it, driving we the bus, there's it's a, wild a, because normally all of the pro mod races on an HRA are on the Eastern half of the country. And then there was just Vegas. Vegas. But I think what's driving the bus on some of that is you've got guys like Justin Bond and that are from that part of the country Janet, that uh, are incentivized. Nick Janet, yeah. Yeah. Nick Janet, you know, more, uh, more spread out. It's not all concentrated in the Southeast. So you're starting to see guys Good that point. would like, would prefer to have a race over there. Great and point, Justin man. Bond carries a lot of weight in that series. Yep. I'm anxious to see how it goes because it's like, you know, sometimes Pro Mod is perceived really well at, at new racetracks and sometimes it's not. So I, I think it'll be a pretty good deal for him. The NHRA Pro Mod program is so far removed from like its early days where it was just a demo derby. Um, yeah. y- you know, it, I remember some of those races that even I, I would be like, oh my God, we did not put our best foot forward. We barrel rolled three cars, oiled the track down twice. Like one of our, you know, one of our racers, backed over somebody in a golf cart like you know what i mean like we just make a mess everywhere we went but it's come so far from that like the racing is spectacular i mean you're talking about the best pro mod teams in the world chasing that deal around and it's it's come a long way i think it's really it's impressive jim parks in the comments shout out for the info 21 pro mods apparently entered for NHRA Phoenix. We need to pull up that entry list. JT, you want to go to NHRA.com yep. and pull up that entry list? Because yeah, I was looking curious at to day. see who's on it. Because that was actually that's a big turnout. Sienna, Sienna? I think she's got somewhere to be. But Yeah, you've got an appointment. Sienna, thank you so much for, for joining us and, and talking uh, bench racing with us a little bit. We can't wait to see where this journey takes you. Uh, I have a funny feeling it's going to be a really, really, really long way. So be careful. For tell sure. your pops hi, and we'll, yep. see you, uh, we'll see you at the racetrack. Thank you so much for having me. Yep. Thanks, Good luck Sienna. this weekend. Thanks, be safe. Be thanks. safe. I've, I haven't been to Phoenix in a hot minute. I went out there in I've like never 19. Been. I've it's never been. It's a cool been. place. It's a cool place, man. They The tower's dope. They've got like, uh, they've got the two tower thing where they've got the tower behind the track and then they've got the other tower right behind the grandstands. Um, it's got a vibe. Like it's not a, it's not a, it's not the fanciest joint in the world. You know, like mm-hmm. it's, it's got that racetrack vibe, the Bradenton, you know what I mean? Like they pack that place out polished. too. They do. I was fixing the fan base They always have a crowd. I mean, there's a, I know a group of guys, uh, my buddy, Fran Vivenzio from Tequila Commissario. Um, he's got a group of buddies that he's been running around with forever. They literally rent like an 18 foot U-Haul and they build a structure inside the bed, um, or inside the, what do you call it? The back of the truck or whatever, so that they can use the top as a deck and they back it up to the fence and they park it in the same place every year and they hang out in the U-Haul. Right. They got some chairs and coolers and all that in there. And then when the racing is happening, they climb up on the roof and you're going, I mean, it's just that's the type of fans they have out there. People that have make it a routine, make it an annual pilgrimage. And I I think it's great to see that place still on the NHRA schedule. It's special. I don't would be weird without Phoenix. They put an on ramp somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, you know, (laughs) screw your on ramp. You know, you can drive a little further or whatever to get to the mall. So exactly another uh, they always make roundabouts and circles anyway. Don't do that. Don't mess up what we have. Okay. Somebody heard that. <laughs> oh yeah, a hundred percent. Um Sienna or Erica just texted me that Sienna does really good burnouts. She's doing a great job. There you See, go. See, told you she you, you and burnouts are like the that. measure of a race car driver. Yes. They really are. Like it, it's uh and I love that burnouts are something of like a signature. You, you know what I mean? Like everybody does it a, a little bit in their own way, like it, how they write their name or something. Mm-hmm. And the little throttle whack, you know, coming off, coming off the throttle, the, you know, some guys using, I remember when nobody with a blower car used a line lock ever, you hit the water at 50, 
Yeah. You get Our, as much of a run at the water box as humanly possible. I could like, I remember what changed, watching early. What changed I don't that? know, dude. Oh, I, I know actually, was, I actually was thinking about that the other day. You don't see anyone do the roll through burnout. Anymore. Um, you Tor know, the first person that I really saw do it Tor was, converters. uh, yeah. Tor converters did it. I think. And, uh, the first guy that I saw consistently using a line lock with a pro mod car and a blower was Mike Castellana after he left the nitrous combination that he had used for a hundred years. And then I noticed other people start to pick it up. I noticed Khaled Belushi picked it up. Um, Eric and, Diller did. Wow. Yeah. Eric Diller. And that, those, that was interesting to me. I consider Mike Castellana, like one of the best pro mod drivers and absolute best, like absolute animal savage. And, yeah. I just think that it was cool that he brought his routine from decades of nitrous racing to blower racing. And I mean, the guy's the defending champion in NHRA pro modified, like he's clearly doing some shit, right. But um, anyways, I always find that kind of interesting because Mike and I, when we were going to pro mod races back in the day, you go to an IHRA race or whatever, them old boys. I mean, I can almost hear the crew chief, like lean in the car and be like, Really need you between 50 and 70 when you hit the water. You know what I mean? Want to be going real fast. Let's all make the, all the stuff is dangerous gone from as those possible. days. You had to roll yeah. through to do the burnout. You had to swap feet in a blower car. We liked that. As nitrous racers, we liked anything that made the shit harder to drive for the blower guys. And then they took it all away. Yeah, Auto sorry. shifters, torque yeah. converters. Two step line lock. Oh my yep. god, give me a break. It really is crazy. <laughs> I remember sometimes being at those races and you'd be really like, you know, because they'd be rolling, they like were, going oh, yeah. very fast. And it's like, I mean, what if there's not enough water down there, bro? You're fitting to go through the same one way or the other. Like, you're going a long way from where we're at currently. Yeah. And uh, no, I kind of miss some of that. Stuff. So what's That's going on out there, Tyler? It looks like uh, I see some sun oh, coming through. You, like you're checking the track. I maybe. was actually, I've been like, hey, Gus, I, I might need to get back to work here. Yeah. That's, I could see you're getting a little, no, I'm getting a little antsy because the race track's antsy. dry. So I'm, right. I'm like getting happy. So, so maybe some testing this evening and testing yep. tomorrow. We were able to test for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes earlier. Um, then had round number two of our rain shower, but it looks like the team has done a marvelous job of getting the racetrack drive because I, number one, I didn't have to do it. Thanks for that, by the way. Appreciate <laughs> you that. You timed this up. Well, I, this worked perfect. Um, but it looks like the racetrack's dry. I can't see the shutdown from here, but I'm, I'm betting it's probably within 30 minutes. So we'll probably run for another two hours tonight and, and get everything going. And hey, we'll go testing again tomorrow. And tomorrow night, about six o'clock, top sportsman, top dragster gets Q1. And hey, PDRA season's off and going. Awesome. Let's do PDRA call outs on Friday nights. Like call I'm outs? I'm game. Something, or I'll do it. Like I'll, we should come up with something because I want to see. I talked to uh, I've talked to some guys that I know are going to adopt like a rivals night type of format, um, and I think it's something we could do cool. Like we could get a sponsor and we could get some where on Friday night we're gonna do. I don't know. Like at the beginning, at the end of Pro Boost and the start of Pro Nitrous four pairs are going to be could be anything could be two pro mod pro boost cars together could be two mm -hmm. pro nitrous cars together could be mixed up but like do four four like a fight night like four yeah. ni four fights tonight and we're gonna get somebody to put up a little bit of bonus bread on it or something because it's that's what i always the way you I, get them to participate is you get you run those cars at the back of the order exactly. then you have a lot of guys calling each other out Everybody's well, and, all in at that point. <laughs> and I think that that's okay. Cause like yeah. strategy is part of this whole deal. And it's like, Hey, I better get me a race tonight because I want to run late in the session. We're not qualified very well, but it's just, we need some more of that shit in the sport right now, because you have what I think have, what I think you have in the, in the PDRA is probably some of the most potential star power that exists in our sport right now. But we got to give them some opportunity and, it, you know, like not that you don't, but give them some of those opportunities where because what we're waiting on is some magic moment to happen where it's Jim Halsey and Tommy Franklin again in the final and we yeah. get to continue this narrative. But you never know what's going to happen it. because everybody's badass. So in this way, we go, nope, we're going to create that matchup. Yeah. We're going to put the biggest names, the biggest stars and put them you know, put them up against each other to, to develop those storylines. And it would potentially impact your races on Saturday. Right. I, I, I would be willing to round up some money or figure out a way to do it. Um, Cause it's like a whole thing we could build into PDRA where every race Friday, Friday night, night program. becomes 
kind of a standalone thing. Yeah. And it's the only place you're going to be able to guarantee you're going to see X driver versus X driver. Well, and that, that changes so much because we we've seen it, you know, even just from from World Series to here. There's so many guys now that are either talking smack or, man, I want to get back at that guy. It was freaking hilarious. In the one hour we were on the racetrack, two cars that ran each other were Derek Ward and Tommy Franklin in the same lanes that they were in round one. And I was, I came around the corner and I went, well, I guess we're going, somebody's going to get a little get back or somebody's going to well, still be in the way. One bro, of the two. what a moment. Like yeah, those things have cool. to be like, cause I'm telling you in any other sport, right? Like you work hard. The NBA works hard to make sure the NBA final, the people who are in the, the teams that were in the NBA finals play at the start of the season, play on yeah. Christmas. Like you try to make sure those matchups happen early in the season or during, you know, you build on them. You and so like, that's what I want. Like Friday night, we need, I want to see Derek Ward and Tommy Franklin run. You know what I mean? And that, yeah. that's badass. Like, Hey, we're going to run E one back um, and build up some of these match races and yeah. build up some of these stars. Because if we're ever going to get pro mod where I think it needs to be and where I want it to be, I want guys like Tommy Franklin to be able to go book a couple you guys are in Galat. So he's going to go make two licks on Wednesday night at wherever right yep. and go so make some money like be exactly. be paid for appearances go race but have a brand that's strong enough that you can go do paid appearances you Other can go things. do go do match races because that's what our sport needs right now is the ex the economy needs to expand all the pressure right now is on promoters yep. and track operators like hey we, we've got to find we got to sell more sponsorships so we can pay more money and charge less entry fees like it's all the pressures there but i think what we need to do is provide more value and like, how can we help these tracks sell more tickets? How can we help them yes. sell more sponsorships and spread some of the burden around where the racers, maybe they don't got to get paid crazy money at the PDRA race this weekend because that's their home and they compete. They compete there not for money, but for the glory. They compete there for the, the right to race in the PDRA and compete for a PDRA world championship, which has, which has value, value in our exactly. space. And but, but the way they pay their bills... Is match racing, it's barnstorming, doing, doing the extra, you know, and it's the, you know, I, I'm a, I don't know if you've seen it, but I stole a page out of your book a little bit on our television commercials this this year that we're using in social media and then on on broadcast and cable television. We've had drivers come out, or we actually filmed them at World Series of Pro Mod. We had drivers come out and say, "Hey, man, I'm going to be at Virginia. I'm going to be at Galat, um, whatever it may be. Come out and see us, man." Like Melanie did our Galat commercials um when she was at a test session and then tommy did our our virginia one and both of them aired i was it was funny i was watching a nascar race the other day and the galat ads kind of filtered into where i live and the virginia ads are right there in my back door so i had to see both commercials watching the nascar race the other night and it was like that's my people like that, that's drag racers on television not just a car but that's a person 100 percent, man and because i've heard that so much already of people going Man, it's so awesome to see a person. Like it's it's more than just a car. And, and I I know Melanie's had good had a lot of response with it, and so has Tommy as well. I think well, you've seen that more and more. And I don't know if you guys have noticed. I've gotten the last two national dragsters uh, for this year. Uh, Angie Smith was on one, and then um, it was uh, J.R. Todd and Sean Langdon on the cover of the most recent one that I got yesterday. So again, I'm sure you're going to see cars on there again soon. But a lot more, seeing a lot more human faces filtering in across the board. It's it's been a slow grind. Like we've been fighting this battle for 20 years now. And it's like we essentially made a promise to ourselves that we would never publish a copy of the magazine, an issue of the magazine that didn't have a human face on it, on the cover of it. Um, and we've deviated from that a handful of times. But 95 percent of the time, there is a race car driver on the cover of that magazine. And we knew it would be a long play. Like I've been having a lot of conversations with people in different spaces and whatnot over the last month or so. And it's like it's a slow burn. Like it takes yeah. time. Like you, there, it can, even the Caitlin Clark thing, like this hasn't happened overnight, no. right? Like this moment, this explosion is seemingly happen over happening overnight, but the groundwork has been laid for this over years. And, you know, some of those processes like the Caitlin Clark one happens faster than others, but there are plenty of these Makes guys sense. and gals that have been, you know, doing the deal for years and years and years and years. I'm a WWE guy, Cody Rhodes. This guy yeah. is like on, I, he was on uh, first take this morning on ESPN mm -hmm. first take. This is a pro wrestler that has been multi, you know, second generation wrestler, uh, you know, and he's always been like a bridesmaid. 
never really been the limelight, never been the heavyweight champ, never been the star of the show. And they are finally positioning him to be that. And, yes. and it's like, you gotta, you gotta keep going, man. I mean, you really, you really do. So anyways, man, it's uh, I'm loving to see some star building happening I in do. drag racing. I really, it's am. How, I, and you, I mean, we kind of stole that idea from you. It's as bad as they'd say that, but it's, um, man, if it works, it works, you know? And, and I, like you said, and I've seen your post on Facebook a couple times, couple weeks ago at the top we're all working together man and 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 people get so bent out of shape and go oh man that's so-and-so's idea no we all called and talked to each other on the phone and we had the idea of all of it doing it together who cares cares if if it works if it works it works works. and and i it's like we're all standing on the shoulders of giants like i'm not here to say we didn't invent this like i i feel like the people that i look up to are vince mcmahon dana white pt barnum like those are my inspiration like those are the people that i look up to those are the books on my shelf those are the things that i pay attention to showmen and that it's we're all learning from everybody. There's no such thing as an original idea in 2024. There's like what? How many times have we all taken stuff from NASCAR and F1? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we just had that conversation and it's like, even though it's different for, you know, we may feel like, man, I'm stealing that guy's idea. It's new in drag racing. Well, you're yeah. a fucking idiot if you don't if you see <laughs> something that's working exactly right. and, you, and you don't you don't try to steal it and, and, and make it work for yourself. Well, that, and, and I'm doing the same thing, going way out of the box on our shakedown race in September, doing the whole dirt track format. It's like. It may not work, but hey, hey I, I, give it a shot. I'm here it for it. For I'm somebody. here for some, I'm here I think for it's it. going to be so freaking cool. Like Tyler, I know your your battery's yeah, about to die. I'm about gone. Yeah. Uh, well, hey man, uh, about to die. Tyler, so thanks for being here, though, man. Yeah, thanks yeah, so thank much y'all. for being here. We appreciate you. Uh, yeah, good luck, man. No more talk about the weather, no. sunshine, and rainbows from here on out. Call Mike and, uh, if you call Mike call if you know anything about it, though. Hey, no yeah. rainbows, bro. We're just going with sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> We're fitting to put a press release about, about, about all of our World Series of Pro Mod guys. Uh, uh, showing up to to take over in the PDRA. So we're Damn happy right. to support you. Nate's on his way tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I can't come to this one. It's my max is my son's birthday, but I will be at yep. VMP flights booked. I'm already coming. So I'm coming in hot to my spend, man. uh, spend a few days with you guys at Virginia Motorsports Park. So I'm looking forward to we're seeing you guys. If uh, you need anything, let us know. JT, Mike, Same appreciate here. you. Sienna Wild Gus, thanks for taking the time. And of course, all of you, Blake in the green room, appreciate all y'all, everybody that supports this show, Redline Synthetic Oils, Stroud Safety Equipment. Thank you guys so much for all you do to keep this deal going and all of you that tune in each and every week. Remember, click like, click share, click subscribe. It really makes a huge difference. Leave a comment, tell a friend, whatever it takes. Bring people into the drag racing conversation. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Be here next week, too. See you. Thanks, everybody.